the, the sheer anger that I felt over what the government was doing to people to keep the lid on this. It, it violated every concept of my, my whole idea of life and honor, honor and democracy and fairness and decency. And then I began to realize that the government we think we've got is not the government we have. And I said this publicly to people in conferences. I said, you people out there blithely think you live in a democratic republic. Well, you don't. And then it's all come out over the years, the, the shadow government. We don't know who they are. We have no idea. We have an inkling of who they might be. But these guys are unelected. They, they, are, not, they are not responsible. They don't have any responsibility to Congress, to the people, to the country, to anything. And they're running the damn program. And that drives me up the wall. I could almost kill my sense of anger is so deep over that, that these self-appointed so-called experts that are running this program and keeping this the greatest story in human history from people, the people have a right to know. And let me tell you why I say that. I shared this with Bill. I have always believed that if this were to come out totally, as big as it is, as dynamite as it is, that it would bring about an expansion of consciousness in people. That we would stop thinking of ourselves as Muslim, Christian, Jew, whatever. We would think of ourselves as human beings from one little tiny planet on the edge of a middle class, mid-sized galaxy. And that knowledge in itself would bring us together as a species and as a race. And I thought, that is our survival. If we can bring ourselves together and think of ourselves as one race, one people. This knowledge that we're not alone and we've never been alone, I think would do that. But so, the story is so big, honey. Let me, let me tell you something else. Over the years I've learned, what I learned in 1967 was nothing compared to what I've learned since, over the years, digging in, uh, talking to people, talking to people in high positions, people who would, you know, sit at a conference and say, hey, let's sit down and talk. Let's, let me tell you what I just learned. I've almost come to the conclusion that the story is so damn big that the government may be right. That the mass of people can't deal with it. How do you tell people that this species, this race that we are all a part of, is a hybrid race? That we were genetically created by an extraterrestrial intelligence? How do you tell them that? Huh. Carefully. You look around and you tell them carefully, depending on where you are. Now, if you're in Baghdad talking to some Sunnis or Shia, you don't even bring the damn subject up. How do you tell them that every major religion on the planet has been initiated and orchestrated by extraterrestrial intelligence? How do you tell Christian fundamentalists that that lovely man from Galilee 2,000 years ago was a part of that program? You don't tell them that unless you check the exits and know how the hell you can run and get out of the house. Okay, you, well, you, you don't bring these subjects up. How do you tell them, for example, that this contact and these abductions is that the genetic program is still underway? That these people are pulled out of their bedrooms and their automobiles at night and are examined and samples taken and all. And it is shocking to them. And it is frightening to them. And it's harrowing to them when they finally have to confront it, and maybe through hypnotic regression they have to deal with it, how do you tell them that that's part of the ongoing genetic development program? But how do you not tell them when they're in the millions, you know? When, when there's so many of them out there right now that are just as aware as you are, and as I am, and, and Bill, you know, and Marcia, I mean, we are not in the minority as much as we think we are. 
And that's the interesting problem, is that the government and what they planned to do all those years back when they were running the country, which they're not anymore, you know, wasn't the best decision they made back then. And now it's the worst thing to keep the secret going. And you obviously believe that it's still important to wake people up. I still believe that there are safe masses of people out there who can deal with it. You didn't fall to the floor sobbing when I just told you that this is a fact. This is not just my idea. These are facts that I have verification for. Okay. You see, I know that. I've talked to people on the inside. I've had people come and share with me who are on the inside. I bet. And say, let me tell you. I've had military officers share with me. I had men working for me, he said, over outside of Las Vegas. That when they were confronted with this, I had grown men with combat experience who broke down and cried like babies. He says, they can't deal with it. I've had to send these men off to another assignment somewhere. They couldn't deal with it. They came face to face with an alien and broke down and cried like babies. Now, okay, but you say you can deal with people, it. Right? These are people that have all have bought into a certain mindset that a lot of people on the outside, and I mean the civilians, never bought into anyway. I mean, it, it just depends who you're talking to. But you and I know that we're in a world that is is changing faster than anyone can even think. You're in a world that isn't at all what you think it is. Exactly. As so, I have said to you many times, you are living at the moment inside of, part of, one of the galaxy's finest, ripest um, zoological gardens. And if you think I've just told you you live in a zoo, you do live in a zoo. Now, I don't know how this deals with your, your sense of ego and your self of self-respect and who you think of yourself are. You are. But you're an animal living in a zoo. Now, how does a mass of people confront, confronted with this reality going to deal with this? You're, you're unusually enlightened and bright on this subject because I think you have informed yourself. Of course. You purposely made tried to learn what it was all about. That's right. So you've taken little bits and pieces of this and absorbed them and digested them and chewed them and masticated them and you little bits and pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. So you've got a pretty good smart there about what's really happening. And you're still walking around like a normal human being. Sure. But you're an exception. You know, you're, I saw an audience filled with people like you when I spoke the last time or my last presentation. And I was speaking to the, I was, what do they call it, singing to the choir? Yeah. Yeah. You're part okay. of the choir. All right. But who, who is it that's coming to you? I mean, Majestic, what about Majestic? Are you familiar with the Majestic Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, how, They don't how, call they, themselves that anymore. But I they, understand. They, what do they call themselves? What's their new oh, name? You know it? Yeah, well, it used to be. PI-40 was the last term I heard. PI-40. All right, well, I'll, I, that's fine. So there's 40. I don't know what the hell that means. There's probably 40 members of it now. Uh -huh. And have they approached you? I've met several of them, yeah. Uh -huh. Because they know you're very well informed. Well, if we get back to the subject here we were talking about just briefly earlier. Why the hell have I gotten away with what I, right. I okay. succeeded in doing? I've got a big mouth. I've come out bluntly and honestly, and I've shared my anger. But I think, and I've said this publicly, mm -hmm. after I began speaking all over the world and all over this country about subjects as sensitive as the ones we've just been talking about, I concluded that there was someone somewhere who wanted me to do this. Sure. Or I could not have gotten away with it. Absolutely. And I don't know who that someone is. I may have met him or her. They may have been among those who have come up to me at conferences and shook my hand and said, damn good job, keep it up, you know, something okay, like that. Okay, so what, what Dan Burris says is that part of Majestic wants disclosure and part of Majestic well, for, does not. 20 years ago, they were split down the middle. All right. 
we know of it. Right. So what do you think? What do you think it's at today? Do you think that? You Robert think Woods. You know who Bob Woods is? Absolutely. Okay. You know his son Ryan? Yes. All right. Bob Woods said this to me at a conference in Long Beach a long time ago. He said, "I know two members of Majestic." He says they. They said they're split down the middle, and he says it's a ferocious damn fight. He says it's vicious. He says one half says, yes, bring it out. The other half said, not only no, but hell no, and not ever. And that group is still calling the shots. Okay. You see, we, we've got a, a shadow government there. I, this is a little bit of interest to, to me as an American. It should be interest to you. Absolutely. Do you know how much money a trillion dollars is? No concept, but it's I, a lot. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. In this country, for three years, 98, 99, and 2000, each year there was $2.7 trillion missing from the Pentagon accounts that they could not figure out where the money went. They knew they had it, and then it was gone. Now, that's $2.7 trillion a year for three years. Now, you think these guys aren't funded well? Oh, hell, they're, they're funded better than the United States Army. <laughs> 